Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've got a story to tell you today, and it's about Jesus. And the subject today is reading the charge. And so if it were in a court system or a police system, the Crown Prosecutor in the court would read a charge. That would be the accusation that they have before the court. But according to the Bible, and we're reading from 2 Timothy, it tells us about the call of God for ministry. And so I'm going to be reading from 2 Timothy 4. And it says here, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you, give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and to turn aside to myths. But you keep your head in all situations. Endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. So that's what the charge is when you actually go to Bible college and you're training for ministry, when they're about to set you loose, that's the charge that they read to you. But also, what they teach in Bible college about 2 Timothy 2, 2. it talks about uh, being a teacher approved. And so it says, I'm reading from um, first verse of chapter 2, it says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. So, um, the most important part of the message today is to talk about everybody's duty that's a Christian to be uh, standing for Parliament, be politicians, because the false teaching that's gone forth, it talks about not serving in authority. And that's completely and totally wrong, and I'm going to share it with you today. And this is what it says. It says, no one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. It's talking about soldiers, and the reason it's talking about soldiers is because they've got force of arms. And the illustration from Fiji is where the army took over the population, took over the government uh, because they had force of arms. When the population in Fiji, the Indian population outnumbered the native population. So that's what happens. It's happened in Indonesia, happened in other places. So it's not good uh, to, for a soldier to serve in politics. And so, but I'm, I'm, what I'm saying to you now is that when, when the people in Israel ask for a king, they ask for Samuel the prophet, I'm sorry, Eli the prophet. Well, I read this. Samuel the prophet, I beg your pardon. <laughs> and this is what he said because they were asking for a king. And he said, but, but when they said, give us a king to lead us, this does please Samuel. So we prayed for the Lord, and the Lord told him, listen to what the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected. But they have rejected me as their king. The gospel of Jesus Christ is this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, 
his only begotten Son, but those who believe shall not perish, but have eternal life. So with, without being a Christian, you're going to hell, I can tell you now. You need to be in Jesus. So God bless you. Thank you.